Hey, let's take a look at a pretty simple concept where we determine intervals where a graph is increasing, decreasing, or constant. And again, the concept is simple. It's more about notation and some, some basic things here. So, so let's get started here. Let's say that the instructions for a problem are to determine the intervals where the function is increasing, decreasing, and constant, okay? And then, let's say we have a graph, and I've got, got a graph here. If you need to pause so you can copy the graph roughly, go for it. Really, um, if you don't see a point indicated, for example, this point at negative six, seven, negative eight, comma seven, you see how that point is sort of highlighted? Make sure to plot that point accurately, and then just curve left and down. And the same thing with these other significant points, right? The, the easy ones to get. So negative six, five, this open circle. Negative two, five, where the two pieces here connect. Zero, one, where the, the vertex of this parabola occurs. Uh, three, 10, where this point occurs. And five, four, where this point occurs. Otherwise, just get the general shapes correct. So pause the video, copy the graph if you're taking notes. Otherwise, let's, let's move forward. The, uh, the first thing I want to do is sort of separate the three. So let's, we'll list intervals where the function is increasing, okay? We'll list intervals where the function is decreasing, and we'll list intervals where the function is constant. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of state the obvious. Um, when we look at uh, this idea, of where a function's increasing, decreasing, or constant, it's important to read, read left to right, okay? And that's kind of natural anyway. When you read a book, you read the sentence from left to right. And the other thing that's important is anytime you talk about where on a graph, you're talking about the x values, okay? And if we're reading the x values, the natural tendency is to read them from left to right anyway because the x values are measured horizontally, all right? So keep that in mind. We're talking about x values only. So here, here we go. Let's first start reading from left to right, and let's just for now, let's highlight in yellow where the graph is increasing from left to right, where the graph is going up as we go from the left to the right. We can see that the graph is going up on this entire portion here until it gets to this point. We can see that the graph goes up from this point up to this point here. And those are the two places where our graph is increasing, okay? We'll talk about how to write that shortly. Let's talk about where our graph is decreasing, where it's going down from left to right. Well, it's going down there and there, okay? And last, let's talk about where the function or the graph is constant. It's constant right there. It doesn't change. It doesn't go up or down in that region. All right, so the, the graph is increasing on the two yellow pieces. And we can see that because this piece of the graph has an arrow pointing to the left, as I read from the left to the right, I would say it's increasing from negative infinity to, and this is negative eight, negative infinity to negative eight, okay? And it's also increasing from zero, this, the start of this yellow line, or this yellow piece, to three. You see how we're reading the x values only, so from zero to three, all right? So that's simple enough. Now let's look at decreasing and do the same analysis. I wanna point out, I'm not answering the question just yet. I'm sort of building up to it. We're supposed to determine intervals. These are not intervals yet. We'll have to learn how to write that. But the decreasing pieces are from negative two to zero and five to infinity because of the arrow, okay? Last, our function is constant from negative six to negative two. All right, let's write this in interval notation and be done. 
Now, from negative infinity to negative 8 means negative infinity, comma, negative 8 in interval notation. And this function is not increasing, even though this is a closed circle, the function is not increasing at that point. It's increasing until it gets to that point. So not unlike domain, you don't put a bracket here, you use parentheses. Okay? It's increasing from negative infinity to negative 8, but not at negative 8. And it's also increasing on the interval from 0 to 3. But it's not increasing at 0 or at 3. It's increasing between 0 and 3. Okay? So use parentheses there. Even though both of those endpoints are included on the graph, use parentheses when you write this answer. So those are the intervals where it's increasing. Typically, you don't put a union here. You could. It just kind of depends on the instructions. And since this question is saying determine the intervals where the function is increasing, well, it's increasing on this interval and this interval. So that might be an appropriate way to write that. You might also you might put a comma between the intervals. Just pay attention to how the instructions are stated. All right. Now, similarly, it goes fast now. Negative 2 to 0 is negative 2 comma 0 with parentheses. And 5 to infinity is 5 comma infinity with parentheses. And those are the intervals where it's decreasing. And last, negative 6 to negative 2, negative 6 comma negative 2 with parentheses. And there we go. We have our intervals where it's increasing, where it's decreasing, where it's constant. And notice that we didn't use brackets anywhere. 